Welcome back to my channel. So I've been gone for a couple weeks. If you've seen anything uh, posted, it's because I had it pre-recorded. Osteoarthritis flare-up, and then the first week of April, it got worse, and then I got my COVID vaccine. So I'm here to first tell you, what is it like to get the COVID vaccine? And what is, you know, my experience with it? So let me tell you. I was scheduled for the Moderma uh, vaccine, which is a booster or a, a, a jab, and then of course then the booster so many, like a month later, and that was with the health department. So what I realized um, when I went to the pharmacy was they were offering the Johnson & Johnson uh, vaccine, which is just the one time, and I thought, okay, so that sounds like a pretty good deal, and I decided to go ahead and um, cancel the Moderma one and go with the J&J, &J, also known as Janssen. So um, I got it scheduled and I did it right before a weekend because I was unsure what kind of um, symptoms I may have. So I made it so it would have the minimal impact on my busy work schedules. Backing up a little bit, I never had COVID. I never had any symptoms of COVID and I was one of the very blessed and fortunate souls to never have had it. I stayed very much in my life bubble. I maintained the same routines, the same protocols, and I was around the same people, um, which I think was very effective in, in taking care of this and staying safer. I went ahead and got the vaccine because I felt like I needed to just because I was in the work, I am in the workplace and other people were getting it. And I thought, oh boy, I guess I better follow suit and do it. All right. What is it like to get the Johnson & Johnson vaccine? What does it feel like? What do you go through? What is my experience? Um, and I'll tell you, everybody is different. First and foremost, um, that whichever one you get, everyone seems to react differently. And I will just, the best I can do is just tell you what happened to me. So I go in on a lunch break. I am coming off of and just on the tail end of a massive neuromuscular flare. I have degenerative discs and osteoarthritis and the flare up was just nailing me, but it shouldn't have had anything to do with the vaccine and that was fine. So we knew that I had it covered with the um, pharmacist that I could get it and I did. They were severely backed up that day. They did not send um, extra people to do injections. So they were trying to juggle every 15, 20 minutes people showing up for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And, um, you know, and they were busy trying to fill prescriptions and do everything else they do. So I had to wait quite a while. You go in, you fill out some paperwork, they re, um, go over some of the basic questions of your name, date of birth, and how you're feeling that day, if you've been in contact with anyone, and then they explain uh, the name of the, um, the COVID vaccine, the manufacturer that you are getting on that day. He fills out a card with your name, and then they just, I had it done in this arm because I'm dominant right hand and I wanted to just you know because I heard that your arm gets sore so um, that's why so you know they prep it and do all that and then the injection goes in and going in it doesn't hurt until it hits the muscle and then you can expect a searing burning fire like icy weird ache um, as it goes in. Now, what I did, and I didn't realize, I didn't tense up, okay? For one thing, I know not to like do this, and it's like, oh, you know, I didn't tense, I was very, but what I did was I moved with him, like that. And he says, oh, you're gonna regret that so much later. And I thought, yeah, okay, great. Just add more pain to my life, right? Go ahead. Um, but yeah, so when you get it, try to be very conscious of just letting your arm rest. Don't sway with it. 
Um, but I did, and I my arm was sore, but not as sore as what he was making it to be, to be honest. Um, afterward, they want you to stay around for 15 minutes, but I really didn't have that kind of time to be monkeying around. I felt one little whooshiness of dizziness, but I think it's because my blood sugar tends to run low, and when that happens, I feel kind of weird, and I hadn't eaten lunch yet, so, um, but that's okay. I took my lunch break to get my shot, and then I just ate something at my desk later, but, um, so once, yeah, I got back, it was three hours later, the chills and a coldness came over my body, and I could feel the chills just kind of running up and down, um, and then I got very cold, so I put a sweater on. Once I got back from my other jobs that I do, I um, I kind of vegged out because I needed to rest at that point. I thought I owe it to myself to do that, and I did. So I kind of moved some of the other jobs off to the other to Sunday, and then Saturday was my day to rest. I kind of laid around all day, and appetite wise, it was fine. It was more like a chicken noodle soup kind of feeling. Like that's the only thing that really felt good. Um, it's definitely like you're catching something or you're catching a cold, but you cannot sneeze, if that makes any sense. So the glands for me were real touchy, achy, chills. Your eyes felt weird. Your back of your head feels weird. Um, it's sore and you know, it just didn't feel good. The The fever started Saturday afternoon, and it went up to 99.6. It stayed in the 99s, uh, 99.8, almost 100. It didn't quite break anything like that for me. Uh, again, everyone is going to be different. There's some people that won't even have a reaction, okay? But I looked at the science behind all of it, and... Um, that's what happened. So um, it was about midnight Sunday to one in the morning Sunday, um, April 11th, because I got it on the 9th. And uh, finally at that point, uh, the fever kind of broke and I got in the drenching sweats. So I went to work, of course, all week. Felt tired and kind of off and very headachy. Now, this was um, a day or two before the news broke about the J&J &J vaccine pause due to uh, blood clots that were found in some people. And um, so I was like four days into the injection when that news hit. And of course, you know, I think everyone's going to have that reaction. And I think that they were really trying to downplay this and say, well, for the greater good, you know, the benefits outweigh the risks, and and uh, I would like for them to talk to those families that lost people and see what they say about it, because honestly, six people out of so many million, hey, you know what, that's unacceptable to me. I don't care what the odds are. It shouldn't have happened, period. But that's my opinion. So, uh, Anyway, so I went through about a week of a, a headache. You know, you can still work. You can still do most things that you do. Um, you just feel a little off. That's all. And then about a week after that, and then it just kind of eased its way out. So that was my experience. Once again, everyone will have a different reaction. Bear in mind, I never had COVID. I was blessed not to have it. But being introduced to the science behind it and my body making, you know, this reaction uh, was for a reason and it did probably what it was supposed to do. So I just thought I'd go ahead and give an update on what it was like. And this is about the second week now, uh, about 14 days out and things are a lot better than they were. Okay, so uh, if you decide to get it, great. Um, get whatever one, you know, you want to, I would say, you know, don't be afraid of it. But at the same time, if you don't want to do it, truthfully, I 
I could take it or leave it, honestly. Um, but that's just an opinion. Everyone has an opinion on this. It's just something to really think about, you know, before you jump into it. Do a little research. Knowledge is power. And I think if we arm ourselves with that kind of knowledge, then we'll be okay. And anyway, that was my experience. So I'll let you go.